What's up my friends, welcome back to another monthly update and this video will be a bit special. We'll talk about the projects that I'm working on right now as always, also some future projects and then we'll talk about some very important stuff which as you can see, yes, I will have a new workshop. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. So before we start with this video and I will show this new workshop, I'll try to put on the screen when I will be editing this video, the timestamp for each part of this video because these videos tend to be a little bit longer than usually, maybe 40, 50 minutes. So if you want to skip any part, just, just use these timestamps right now on the screen. And then I will start with my old workshop in order to compare the sizes, the stuff that I had there and the stuff that I will have here. We'll also talk a little bit about the new parts that I bought for this workshop, for example, I don't have lights right now, I have these ones which are just something that I've improvised. We will talk about some new projects and some future projects as always and maybe some new gears that I'll buy for this workshop so I have those gears on my to-do list. So guys, let's just start with my old workshop and compare with this new one. So this is my actual workshop, I'm not sure if you remember it, I've showed it, uh, I showed my workshop a few times in my videos, especially in the weekly update. And right now it's a mess because this will be the last day that I'll be here because tomorrow I'll be moving to a new workshop that is a lot bigger and that's why I'm making this video, this uh, monthly update to show you the difference. Because as you can see, this is just a room, a two by two or two and a half by two and a half. So it's very small. So that's why I'm very limited with this workshop because first of all, it's just an apartment and you can make big stuff because I have neighbors below and neighbors upstairs. And second of all, it's very small. I can barely move here, uh, especially when I have the tripod. And when I'm using two cameras, I can not even move. I will stay here in the middle and just record something on the table. So this is it. And this is to see the difference uh, between this one and the new one. So now let's go to the new one. Okay guys, so we are back into the new workshop. I've been here for a few days but this is far from being ready. There are a lot of stuff to do. And first of all is to decide where to place each part. The workshop table, my desktop to edit the, edit the videos and have my PC there. The storage I think will be here and maybe another workshop table here, I'm not sure. And then I will buy all the tools that I want. I, wa I want to buy a LED machine, a CNC machine, maybe a, a big laser engraver. And I'm not sure, but the list for my tools is very big. Anyway, let's just talk about this workshop and see step by step how this will evolve. Before I show you the size of this workshop, which by the way, as you can see, is a lot bigger, which is good for me. But another part that is very good for me is that this is the first floor. Actually, this is a duplex. I think it's called a duplex. And as you can see, basically my apartment is down here. I have these stairs and upstairs is the workshop. And that's perfect for me because like that, I don't have neighbors below me. And well, that's a good thing because I can make a little bit more sound. Okay, so let's talk about the size of this workshop. You heard me that my old workshop was 2.5 by 2.5. Actually, that was three meters by 2.6 meters. So that's not very much. But this workshop is six meters wide and 5.7 meters long. So it's basically a squared one. But then I have one more meter here which is just like uh, two holes because these are two windows. And I could also maybe create some sort of support here and storage stuff here. So basically I have one more meter by six meters more. So this is huge for me. In my case, this is a huge workshop. I never had a workshop this big. Okay, so let's start here. That will be the entrance because I have here the stairs. And excuse me for this mess, but I have a lot of boxes and I have to storage them right here. And this will be the storage area. I have two more storage units like this one that I will have to mount and place here. Yeah, they are here, these ones. And yes, you will enter here. And by now I've decided to place my workshop table on this side and then my PC table here, my desktop. And actually I'm ordering a custom made table because this is very small right now. So I want to make a taller one so I could work uh, by uh, standing and also a table that will go from this wall till the other table. So it will be like three meters long. In that way, I'll have a lot of more space. And maybe this will change because right now I've made a few changes. First I have the, I had the PC. 
<laughs> so we have ghosts. <laughs> These are just garbage, are empty boxes. Anyway, first I had a PC here, but I didn't like it. So I will place it there. The workshop table here. And then on the other side, we'll have the storage. And maybe here I have my tools, my drilling, uh, drill tower, my lat machine, maybe a CNC machine. And in the middle, I'm not sure yet. But more or less, that will be the structure here in this workshop. It might change because I only have a few days here in this workshop. But anyway, stay tuned for that. By the way, I take advantage of this moment to explain that I have a new lens for this camera. And as you can see, it's a lot wider. I will place a video with, for you with the other lens, which is a smaller one. And you will see that it's like something close to my face. But this one is a bit more expensive. But this will go from 11 up to 22 millimeters. So it's a lot wider. So like that, I will make uh, better blocks like this one. So you will see a lot more behind me. Just wanted to say that because I'm very happy to finally have a better lens for my camera. Actually, with this camera, I've been using three lenses. And first of all, I've been using this one, which is the stock one. But uh, this actually felt on the ground. And I bought a new one that also felt on the ground with the camera. And that's because, well, the old workshop was very small. And when I have the tripod near to my table, and actually I've been using my cameras with an uh, adapter, because like that I don't have to use batteries because I will have to change the batteries each one hour and two or two hours. So when I'm recording a tutorial, that will take me the entire day. And if you don't want to change batteries, you have to use, well, an adapter like this one. So sometimes I will touch with my leg, the tripod or the cable, and that will make the camera fall. And that's why I have this one, which is right now, it won't focus well on one side. And then I have a new one, which is totally destroyed. And I'll try to place some video with that on the screen right now. And then I've been using this other lens, which is from another Canon. But since I have to use this adapter, that will make the picture be very close to the camera. So this will be impossible to use with for vlogging, vlogging because the only thing that you will see is my forehead and we don't want that. And then I bought this one, which is 11 to 22 millimeters, which is the one that I will show you right now because it's the one that I'm using. Okay, so this is the new lens, 11 to 22 millimeters. This is a wide angle lens, so it's perfect for vlogging. And this actually, actually costs you like 400 euros, but I got it for 220 from a second hand store, but this had only been used once, so it's perfect for me. And this is the, what I will, be, I will be using for making my vlogs videos. Hey guys, here we are another day. This package just arrived, and this is the light that I will be using for my workshop. So let me just open one and show you what type of lights I want to use. So this is just one module and I'll add three or maybe four if I need more modules. And as you can see, each module can hold two lights. And this looks like a neon light, but this is actually LED. This has 24 watts. So each will have 48 watts. And that's enough for me. If I will use three, I think that that will be enough. And also this will be quite efficient because LEDs don't use too much power and they give a lot of light. We have all the supports there and using those, we will clamp this on the, on the ceiling of my workshop. Hey guys, good morning once again. This is a new day. I know that this doesn't look like much, but these were actually like six hours of organizing everything and I still have a lot of boxes. Basically, it looks like I haven't done much, but trust me, this was a lot of work. Anyway, I wanted to tell you something about some new t-shirts that I've designed. Okay, so if you go below in the description, you'll find a link for Teespring, where is my shop for creating these uh, t-shirts. And you'll have this one, and you'll have uh, one with a resistor, you'll have the electronics one, the amplifier one. I have a bunch of designs and I'm creating more and more each day. So if you want to support me and also get something nice, something geeky for you, because all the t-shirts are related to electronics or uh, DIY stuff or makers in general. So if you want to support me, check the, that uh, shop below and choose a t-shirt and buy one. Okay, so now for something new, a new tool in my workshop is this new 3D printer based on resin. This is the Elegu Saturn 2. And I'm pretty sure that you've seen this in the background of my videos these days. This is a DLP printer and it's 8K. Let me just take this off. This printer is huge. I mean, it's not as big as the FDM printers, but speaking of about a DLP printer, this is huge. The screen is 8K resolution, 28 microns, so the details 
are very, very good. These are a few examples and I'll try to put more on, this, on your screen. I'm working with this right now. I made this uh, elf. This is Jinx from League of Legends, if you play League of Legends. Let me just focus here. Then I have a chess piece. This is Ash, also from League of Legends. And the Millennial Falcon, uh, printed in uh, transparent ABS. So, this printer is made out of metal. It has a huge screen. You also receive it with this filter in order to remove a little bit the fumes from the resin. It can print, I'm not sure yet, let me just check that. Okay, so I've just checked it. It can print 219 by 123 and a height of 250 millimeters. So you can print pretty decent uh, prints, quite big with this one, compared with other uh, DLP printers. And the best of all, it's 8K. And I also like this feature that I will talk about right now. Let me just remove this. So the bath is made out of metal and it also has these uh, screws here, this bolt. So you can place it on your table without the FAP film touching the table because you have these uh, legs here. And then a good thing that they made is that they placed a tempted glass on top of the screen in order, order to protect it. And this is the same glass that you have on top of your smartphone in order to protect it. Because imagine that you drop your uh, uh, printing bed on top of the screen and you destroy it. The most expensive part of this printer is the screen. So that's a pretty nice feature to have in order to protect it. So the screen is monochrome, so you can print very fast from one uh, second up to three seconds if you want uh, the layer to be a little, a little bit harder. So one second for each layer, that means that you can print pretty high uh, prints in just a few hours. So it's very fast. And I'll try to place on the screen right now a few examples that I've recorded right now. But anyway, wait for the next uh, weekend that I'll place the full review of this printer because I'll make some more tests with it and show you everything that you would need to know about this printer and share it with you guys. Okay, so that's, that's a, a new tool that I have for my workshop and I'll place it somewhere here, I'm not sure yet. Okay guys, now let's talk about some future projects that you will see on this channel. As you can see here, it's high quality microphone and I saw this project on DIY Perks YouTube channel and I thought it's, well, it was amazing because it's very low cost and you will see why I'm telling you that. So I want to make one myself maybe based on some metal parts and also some 3D printed parts. But let me show you what we have here. Basically, this is the most important part. And this is the microphone membrane, the condenser. And this cost me just like 15 pounds, I think, because I bought this from United Kingdom. And that's like maybe 20 euros. But this same module is inside of this microphone that you have right now on the screen. And this microphone could cost you from maybe $500 up to $1,000, depending where you find it. But it's a very expensive microphone and it's high quality. So why is this so cheap when the microphone is so expensive? Well, because of the circuit design, also the, they have to pay the designers, they have to pay the, the manufacturer to make all these metal parts. But anyway, what I want to use is this membrane with a small uh, circuit. Also use this mesh to insulate the noise because it will have a lot of noise. So we have to use some metal mesh to insulate that. And then I'll make a small circuit using these ICs. These are just some amplifiers. Connect that circuit of the amplifier to a sound card like this one. This cost me like $25. I paid a little bit more in order to have some better sound. But let me just focus here. So the idea is to connect the audio from the membrane, the condenser to the audio amplifier circuit, then to the sound card. And from here we have a USB connector to your, uh, to your PC. And like that, I will have a very high quality microphone, but using very low cost parts. What more we have here? We have some uh, high, uh, low resistance uh, wires in order to have a good connection and some others amplifiers to test around and some connectors and so on. Oh, and these are some elastic uh, ribbons because the condenser must be uh, suspended in mid air in order to avoid any vibration. So stay tuned for that because this will be a very interesting project. I also want to see the difference between the microphone that I'm using right now, which is the T-Bone and I don't remember the number, but that cost me like 150 euros eight years back. So imagine that is very old and compared to this one, which will be below $100. I want to see the results and I will share those, those results with you guys. So stay tuned for that. Okay guys, so the next thing that we'll talk about is about this PCB here. This is not actually a project, but it's still a PCB and I wanted to show it to you. This is a little bit uh, personal because, believe it or not, the next week 
it will be my wedding and I thought it would be a nice gift to give to my guests this PCB and as you can see it has an oscillating LED and a small battery in the back so let me just show the PCB to you just a little bit as you can see I've ordered a lot of PCBs these are more than 100 because we have a lot of guests well not a lot but maybe like a hundred or so and as you can see we have an oscillating LED here and I say oscillating LED because usually LEDs are just on or off but this already has a small circuit inside so it will os oscillate by itself in that way we don't need a microcontroller or anything and on the back we have a small cell battery and a resistor to limit the current and that's it that's the design for this PCB as you can see in order to make different colors I've used the solder mask the silk layer and also I've exposed the copper here to make a different color and if you use copper below or not the solder mask it will also change the color between a matte black or a more, more shiny black so that's it it's a very simple design as you can see we have here the clips for the batteries these are very very low cost we have the resistors to limit the current and also here we have the oscillating LEDs okay so here I have three more projects that I want to show you and that will be it for this electro news episode and the first one is this one this is a laser project so basically this will dance on the rhythm of the music so we have a bunch of color la lasers but instead of buying one I bought this for my wedding day so instead of buying one I will try to make one myself so I've made a PCB which I'll show you just a moment let me just take that PCB this here is the PCB that I've designed for this project and if this doesn't work I will just use some um, external coils but the idea is to have some small magnets here and to move a very small mirror and that will bounce the laser and have it moved in the rhythm of the music for that I bought some lasers a few colors red green and blue and then we have some prisms like this ones in order to um, focus all the colors in the same spot so here we'll enter the green here the blue and here the red and all the colors will come out here and then they will bounce on this mirror that will, I will have here and with some edge bridges I will move the mirror uh, left to right and that will make the light dance with the uh, rhythm of the music so stay tuned for this project so the next two projects are very simple I just have a few components by now this is just metal powder and it's very very fine as you can see one micrometer I have 500 grams of this and what I want to use this with is to mix this powder, this metal powder, with the resin for the DLP printer, which we have talked before. And as you can see, this is the inside core of a brushless motor. So what I want to do is to test the different ratio of metal and resin and get a good magnetic field inside of the metal core of the brushless motor. This will be 3D printed. So that's what I want to do, a 3D printed motor, but using internal metal for the core. And the next project is just a light spectrometer. Let me just take it out. So basically this will divide the light in all the frequencies. And then I bought a camera, a digital camera, which has, hasn't arrived yet. I'll connect the camera here and then connect it to an Arduino Mega and print the frequencies on the screen. And by that we can uh, divide all the frequencies of the light and maybe we can even use it with the lasers because the red blue and green light will have different frequencies so this will be a simple project but I think it will be quite interesting so stay tuned for that guys so guys basically that was it for this episode I'm sorry that I wasn't able to finish the workshop but I think I first thought that I will be finishing it in just one week but it have been already a few days and I haven't made even, not even 10% of the entire work that I have to do so I'll make for sure a lot more updates about the evolution of my workshop. First of all, I have to finish with all these boxes. But till then, you will see some normal projects. Or maybe even another weekly or monthly update, Electro News, how I like to call these episodes, about some other projects. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you like my new project because I do a lot. I'm very excited to make this work. And see you later, guys, with more projects. Thank you very much. Hey, guys, so we are at the end of this video. So some of you guys are supporting me on Patreon and thank you very much for that because thanks to you I'm able to buy all these components and the modules that I use for my tutorials. And if you would like to support me as well, you have the links for my Patreon, for my website and my shop below in the description. Thank you for everything.